Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about units and measures, which is a type of measurement and data question. This video in particular is going to be looking at the topic of rates. So let's begin by reading the short summary of what we can expect in rate related questions. Rates refer to the value of an object changing with respect to another. It may be a value involving time, temperature, or some other measurement. Rate questions usually involve the use of multiplication or division. It's important that students understand unit conversion when doing rate questions. Okay, so rates are kind of very similar to the idea of ratios. They essentially represent two things in relation to each other. So for example, we see actually a lot of rates in real life. For example, speed is a rate because if you take a look at the units for speed, it's typically kilometers per hour. So in this case, we're measuring distance as a respect or how much distance is changing per unit of time. And that's what rates are essentially. It's a comparison of two different units. And these are very helpful in multiple areas of our lives. For example, things like costs, where we have things costing money in terms of how much things you get for paying for that amount of price. So for example, if you're buying carrots, then carrots might be $2 per carrot. And then that you still see the two units in the carrot. So we have the dollar sign for the money amount, and we have the amount of food that we get, which is the its own unit in respect. So at the end of the day, rates questions means that we actually do have to be fairly strong in our knowledge of units, especially because questions can refer to units, sorry, questions can refer to rates utilizing different units to represent the same information. So going back to the concept of speed, just because it is something that we're quite familiar with, speed is often represented in kilometers per hour. When you go driving a car, this is generally the units they use. But sometimes it's more appropriate to discuss the speed in terms of meters per second. Because these two rates are utilizing different units for the same um, kind of representation, we also need to be confident in how we actually convert between two different rates. For example, uh, I think using the fraction kind of technique is quite handy for when I understand how to do unit conversion. So to do all any kind of unit conversion, we first of all need to know what to convert by. We know that there are 1000 meters in one kilometer. So this can be represented as 1000 meters per one kilometer distance, or um, there are 60 seconds in one minute, 60 minutes in one hour. So in total, there are 3600 seconds in one hour. So again, you can represent this as uh, 3600 seconds per hour. So this kind of way of writing your rates as a fraction can be helpful because you can cancel out the units just like you do with numbers cancelling out. So for example, if you've got 15 over 3 times by 1 over 5, the 5s cancel out and the 3s cancel out and you get a much simpler number. Similarly to that concept, you can also apply those to units. So for example, if I want to convert 10 kilometers per hour, whoops, 10 kilometers per hour into meters per second, we can multiply by the fact that there are one kilometers every 1000 meters. And the fact that there are 3600 seconds per hour. And we can then cancel out the common factors. So 
the kilometers cancel out, the hours cancel out, and what units were left with is meters per second. And so the calculation then becomes 10 times 1000 divided by 3600 meters per second. And that's just a kind of a trick that you can employ to make sure that your units are in the correct format whenever you're doing these types of unit conversions. Now that's enough information about rates. Let's see if we can actually apply that in this example question. Here we see the temperature at the Blue Mountains is 12 degrees at midday, but began falling at a rate of three degrees every three hours. What time would it first hit below the freezing point? Okay, so we're essentially told the rate of the temperature change. And we're told it's three degrees per three hours. Now, because rates are very similar to ratios, we can actually make sure that this is more simpler to understand. So for example, we can divide or multiply the entire rate by any number, as long as you do it to both of the numbers uh, to ensure that the rate is being maintained, we just look at it at a different scale. And then we can then see that if we divide both sides by three, we get one degree per hour. So essentially the temperature is dropping by one degree every hour that passes. Now it is currently 12 degrees, sorry, it is currently 12 o'clock at midday and the temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. Now the question wants us to figure out what time would it be when it first hits below the freezing point. Now this requires us to understand that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So the temperature change has to be, or the time when the temperature of the water reaches zero degrees. So the amount of temperature that has changed for this to happen is clearly a change of 12 degrees Celsius needs to be made. So if we want 12 degrees Celsius of a change and we know that the rate of change is a, a degree celsius per hour we clearly need to multiply the ratio by 12 to get from this number to this number and remember we always have to multiply rates uh, both sides of the rates by the same number to ensure that the rate is maintained so that means it takes us 12 hours for the water temperature to change by 12 degrees so that means at exactly 12 hours after 12 p.m. is equal to midnight or 0000. zero, zero, zero. This is when the temperature is equal to zero degrees Celsius. Now, if we went and then selected answer option B, we would be incorrect because the question says what time would it first hit below the freezing point. So it's always very, very important to read the question quite thoroughly so we don't miss important information like that. So 12 a.m. is when the temperature hits exactly freezing point. So the minute afterwards would be when the temperature falls below the freezing point. So the correct answer option is not option B, but rather option C. Okay, so that would be the correct kind of techniques that we would employ for rates related questions. We have to be very careful to take a look at the units being used and see if we can simplify the unit further. Then we can manipulate the rate by either multiplying or dividing by the same number to get a, uh, a rate that is helpful in answering the question. So that is the end of this video. Thank you everyone so much for listening.